Good morning. This is great to have this many people here. This is a wonderful audience. Welcome to the Clark. I'm Michael Holly. I'm the director of the research and academic program. So many thanks. Uh, don't worry, I'm not going to do the huge litany that it probably requires. But first of all, to Jill and Aruna, who conceptualized and organized and invited you all to this conference. Uh, to Natasha Becker, the coordinator of all our Mellon initiatives, to Julie Walsh and Deb Fair, thanks. You, you arranged so many things. To our graduate students, Jesse, Ashley, Sarah, Natalie, thanks, thanks. Um, and to the audience, um, I'll tell you a little bit something about what we do here. In addition to holding um, residential fellowships. We hold these Clark conferences every year or two on the, what I think are the, uh, cons what I consider to be the meta topics of art history. And then we publish them. I meant to bring a book to the podium, but you'll see them around. We publish them in, in a popular series uh, from Yale. The latest one is The Migrant's Time, just came out this fall, edited by Saloni Mater. This particular special Clark Conference gives us our own opportunity to rethink the challenges posed to the history of art and visual culture by post-colonial critical strategies and the ever-increasing integration of economic and artistic markets in the context of new technolo technologies of communication and the usual multinational corporations. In the tradition of the research and academic program here at the Clark, we've had a 12-year um, a commitment to these meta questions of art history. And in that vein, the next two days will no doubt uh, encourage and engender many, many questions. But one of the primal ones being, how is the traditional linear narrative of art history with its Eurocentric origin and inclinations to deal with an awareness of multiple narratives, many different senses of temporalities, and the absence of a center from which its stories must be told. Now this kind of question is particularly important to us here at the Clark because of our manifest mission to understand the art histories of nations and cultures far beyond Western Europe and the United States to foster a fresh global vision of the discipline of art history that embraces geographic, cultural, and disciplinary diversity and encourages, at least for us at the Clark, this uh, little gem of a museum, mainly of impressionist art, new voices, we want to hear new voices, supported by the Mellon Foundation for seven years and the Getty, as well as several other foundations, uh, we began by reaching out to colleagues principally in West and Southern Af Africa with gatherings convened both here in Williamstown and in Johannesburg. A few of the participants from those meetings are with us today and I look forward to their reactions to what will be said here. The same is true of art historians from Central and Eastern Europe who are also among us, I'm thrilled to say. The second three-year Mellon initiative enabled us to hold discussions in Tallinn, Estonia, Bruno in the Czech Republic, and in Bucharest, Romania, with colleagues from many different nationalities who suggested, among many other matters, that the art historical traditions of that part of the globe no longer regard themselves as belonging to a region with a distinct intellectual character of its own, but rather as active, they th saw themselves as active participants in the broader intellectual culture of European art history. Even the humanities, of course, at large. Now for the past two days, before most of you got here, a number of us have been engaged in a most lively workshop 
convened by Stephen Nelson of UCLA on international initiatives and regional collaboration with scholars in one, one small seminar room from Turkey, China, South Africa, Nigeria, Estonia, Belarus, Lithuania, India, Romania, and Morocco, and Canada, <laughs> all of whom are with us here today. In all of these activities, the Clark's role is, first of all, what do we do? Well, we, we apply for the grant money, then we organize, then that's followed by active listening and learning on our parts. The discussions make it imperative that we try to understand and negotiate the complexity of all regions into institutional politics and the fact that the centers of tradition and innovation sit side by side in rapidly changing and economically challenged nations. There's a good side to globalization, of course, attempt to see, and that's the attempt to see ourselves through the eyes of others and vice versa. And most important, we think that we have been promoting the most, we hope that we've been promoting the most progressive aspects of globalization, namely the interaction of different cultures rather than the economic exploitation of far-flung lands in the hands of international finance. <clears throat> the questions that have risen throughout these seven years, uh, it's very hard to uh, reduce them to just a number, but I was thinking about them late last night, and I, I think I've come up with a couple, or maybe a few. How might any history of art be conceptualized and organized without facilely invoking geography and the national narratives of the past? We've been also talking about these in the workshop. And yet, what can we learn from the past 15 years of national narratives and publications? How do these countries' art histories relate, or not, to the dominant narratives of Western Europe and the United States? What intersections and incongruent incongruencies have emerged? What are some of the dominant approaches, intellectual trends, and critical positions that have been constructed in the last 20 years? And how has the entire discipline of art history been called into question, as it should have been? What kinds of theorizing, philosophies, and intellectual excitements have been generated in many countries that potentially have a worldwide impact? The themes that we've been discussing over this course of years. Um, we've been discussing, for example, belatedness, question of time, time and time again. The historical models we have inherited from the past in art historical study, as well as in museum practice, are simply not serving us very well anymore. They, it, they are inadequate to the ambitions of art history today. They're critiqued for the language of, they, in these seminars, they've been repeatedly critiqued for the language of delay. Ideas in art do not move from one location to another without undergoing many transformations. Another major theme, in addition to belatedness, of course, is nationalism. It has such contradictory aspects to it, negative, positive values, while allowing for the assertion of local identities, it blocks and alienates so many others. Internationalism, the ideal of treating all nationalities the same, is utopian because of obvious inequalities of power. What, what's left? Cosmopolitanism, transnationalism. And the third and last theme that emerged was the the study of networks, boundaries, flows, trade routes, and so on, that might appropriately shift the perspective of national histories towards transnational trajectories. But back to my uh, first question. How is the history of art, as currently configured, to cope with the view that its notion of history, identified with a single teleological temporal trajectory, is distressingly parochial. 
There are, of course, several ways to consider the term exploded art history uh, called for in the subtitle of the conference here. Is an exploded, I think I might prefer, but that's another story, the adjective shattered, but uh, anyway, art history is uh, fated to disintegrate into many distinct but uncoordinated narratives dealing with the histories of different cultures or even different nations. Does the expression exploded perhaps suspiciously tantamount to let many flowers bloom lead to a mindless relativism in which each tradition wanders down its own path without regard to the rest? Is the splintering of incommensurate stories to be welcomed as an alternative to an art history dominated by an European experience? Well, of course. What is the relation of these fragments? Are these shards of the fragile vessel that once held the history of art fairly easy to master, to relate to one another? Can we forgo, set aside, forget the relations of power responsible for the fact that European art history has been exported throughout the world and that its narrative still serves as the model on which other stories are uh, constructed? What is the relation, say, of the modernist story as told in the hefty two-volume Art Since 1900 What's the relation of that volume, say, to that of African modernism recounted in the exhibition of the short century, African art since independence? How do these stories possibly relate to one another, or, or do they not? And one final thought as I was thinking about all this, a useful parallel here might be to look back at the identity politics movement in American cultural history. It is amazing, but it's also very frightening to see how soon the passionate political investments of feminism, queer theory, ethnicity studies have kind of faded in the past decade. Have, have these passionate positions once held simply be, be on the verge of disappearance, or have they been incorporated into everyday art historical practice? Once again, the dominant narrative. How can we resist seeing this happen in such a way uh, to initiatives in the wake of the global turn? How can we assure that the particular distinct positions from which art history might yet be written, how do we make sure that these won't eventually get lost in the shuffle? Clearly, something is gained and something is lost when claims to identity move from the essential to the strategic. Might this be the pattern according to which future art histories written from very different geographic and cultural situations might develop? Will it be possible to adjust to make more complex the stories currently told about the Western past to do justice to those areas of the world once placed in its shadow? Or will the process once again simply reaffirm the economic and military power of those nations with which the history of art has been identified? I really look forward to hearing what our conveners and our many uh, impressive speakers have to say.